about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. What is going on, everybody? This is the NXT Battleground Picks and Predictions by yours truly, Cage. Of course, you know I'm Cage. So you know this is Cage My IQ, the best place for MMA content. You can follow me on social media and subscribe to me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. My Twitter handle is at Cage IQ. Instagram, it's Cage My IQ. Twitch, it's Cage My IQ. And then, of course, we are on YouTube with all this content for you. You can find us on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash CageMyIQ. I am partnered with the Bloodline Entertainment Network. We've got a bunch of podcasts just giving you all the content. for. we got MMA, wrestling, gets covered, sports, animated, and entertainment with entertainment, you can find Graydon with the director's cut. He gives you his uh, final words on all the different uh, movies uh, in cinema. Great show there. We got in wrestling, we got the Tim King show. He gives recaps. We got JD with the WrestleBread podcast. We got Mike De Niro. We got Circle of Debate with Ivan. We got Nick and Keith. With the Universal Wrestling Podcast, we got the Travel Chief, but the ones up in the air. We got Devin and Aziz with, of course, Clark Street Wrestling. Plus, we got more. We got so much more. And all you got to do is go to YouTube for the Bloodline Entertainment Network and type in www.youtube.com slash at the Bloodline ENT. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so you guys can get all the content when it is put out. Of course, we are here for you guys. And then lastly, we got the Cage My IQ merch. Just been put out last month. As you see right there, we got the new logo on the shirt. The shirt is in white, green, gray. We got more colors coming out, but this is done by Mike Ginn of Fighters First. He does the job. What a great site. Get wrestling and MMA uh, designs on here. If you want uh, apparel for these two things, go right to him at fightersfirst.shop. But all you got to do is go to the Cage My Q collection, check out the Cage My Q 2023 shirt, and then Give it a buy. I love it. You're going to love it. It's on fightersfirst.shop, so check it out. And, of course, before I get into any of the uh, predictions and picks for Battleground, all I ask for you guys to do is smash the like button down below and hit me up in the comment section to the right. Give me your feedback and opinions on NXT Battleground, who you got winning, who are you going to bet on? What do you think is going to happen afterwards? Hit me up in the comment section and let me know your feedback. But let's get started here. We got six matches on the card. This is going to take place this Sunday alongside, of course, Double or Nothing. We know what uh, WWE is doing, trying to play a smart game and taking over the weekend. But the first match that we have for you on Battleground is, of course, the NXT Heritage Cup Championship. I love this uh, type of match. We got the champ, Noam Dar, the Scottish Supernova. He is the plus 150 underdog going up against Dragon Lee, the minus 200 favorite. Dragon Lee came in and debuted on the last uh, NXT TakeOver pay-per-view. Had a sluggish start there. Uh, getting his feet wet, but since then he's looked on fire. He has a, he's has his eyes set on Noam Dar, who came back with the Heritage Cup trophy. As you know, in the Heritage Cup matches, 
and it's basically it's called the British Rounds, and it's six three minute uh, rounds where you go at it. it. It's two out of three falls. If you knock out or incapacitate your opponent, you basically win the match right then and there. If you pin your opponent, the round is over, and then you start a new round, and the first to two wins. Or if you get to the six rounds and it's uh, tied, then the champ retains due to the championship tiebreaker in there. Uh, this is going to be great. I still don't know how they have Dragon Lee as the favorite, but I'm going to play that to my advantage. I think they've showcased the past couple weeks where Noam Dar doesn't know if he's going to be able to retain it. He said Nathan Frazier getting involved. Dragon Lee cost them the match against Nathan Frazier this Tuesday while Dragon Lee was talking to the trophy. And it seems like he can't, Noam Dar can't find somebody to back him up in the corner. I think he wind up will find in somebody in time, just in time, right before the match. I think he finds a way to pull this one out somehow. There's no way that you have Dragon Lee beat Noam Dar this fast for the Heritage Cup Championship. Noam Dar is going to hold this for a while. I think. I think he finds ways to sneakily win the match. At plus 150 odds, that's great odds for uh, Noam Dar to win this match. I think he's a very underrated wrestler. Uh, he, he's very good on the mic. He's good in the ring. He has that gimmick down to where he's kind of full of himself. He doesn't, he doesn't think that people are going to beat him. And it just works. And, and so I'm going with Noam Dar with the picks and predictions. And I'm hammering down uh, him with the plus 150 uh, odds right here. I think that's great odds. I think they're trying to fool you into thinking Dragon Lee is going to win because of how hot he is the past couple weeks. They're trying to build him up to eventually be something for, for the North American title. But I just don't think that he's going to take the Heritage Cup championship. I think that's Norm Dar. I think that's in his rear house. And I think he retains his first uh, trophy uh, defense on NXT. So I'm going with the underdog, Norm Dar, in this match. Moving on to the next one, we got the NXT Tag Team Championships. We got the champs, Gallus. Gallus boys are always on top. Wolfgang and Marv Coffey going up against the Creed brothers uh, right here. The, the Gallus brothers are minus 140. Uh, favorites, the Creed Brothers are plus 100. This could go either way. We've had this uh, this thing going for weeks with these two where the Creed Brothers would ask for the title shots and then Gallus would say, no, back on the line. We thought that, of course, uh, the family was going to get the title shot, but then the Don of NXT got uh, arrested and then Stax had to deal with the aftermath of that. So they weren't going to get it. So that left... Creed Brothers at, at the front of the line now for those shots. The Creed Brothers have said, we're going to beat you, and there's nothing you can do about it. And then st- this past Tuesday, the Creed Brothers got that shot, but then it got attacked 3-2 to two, uh, with, uh, with, of course, uh, the Co- Coffee Brothers and Wolfgang getting them with the numbers, but then outcome stack to help save the day for the Creed Brothers. And it seems like the Don and Stax are baby faces right now, which is great. I like that they're not in betweeners right now. They're baby faces. So that he came out to help the Cree brothers. And if the Cree brothers win, they said that they're going to give Stax and the Don of NXT the first title a shot when they win. And at plus 100, I like those odds. It's even odds. Gauss is minus 140. You can go oh, good with either side. If you feel like Gauss is going to win, you bet them. If you think Creed Brothers are going to win, you bet them. I'm leaning towards the Creed Brothers here. I think they get their titles back. If they don't get it here, then I have a feeling that they're going to get caught up soon because there's nothing left for them to do in NXT. They've won the titles. They've done about uh, – four or five title matches already. Uh, It just comes to a point where when do you finally call them up? Uh, Do you put the titles on them now, give them that one last title run, 
have them drop him and then call him up, or do you have him lose here and then call him up right afterwards or wait until after SummerSlam to call him up? I think they're going to get that second title run. I think they win the match. I think it's something fresh for them to finally get that that win. They stay, they came so close last time, but with the returning, uh, of course, uh, the third member, Dow, uh, Gauss, that's what kept them from winning uh, at NXT uh, Stand and Deliver. Now they know that he's there, so there's no more surprises like Jury has said on Tuesday. I think they get it done. The Craig brothers win the, uh, the, the NXT Tag Team Championships. And then uh, with the plus 100 odds, I think they're great odds here. So I'm going with the underdog once again in, in, in this matchup. Uh, NXT seems like it's going to be good profit for people uh, going with the underdog. So I got the Creed brothers becoming two-time champs and then have one last run before they get caught up finally. Moving on to the next match. This one was very heavily uh, promoted on uh, NXT this Tuesday. We got the last man standing match between Eli Dragunov versus Dijak. These guys were just brawling, going at it all night in the back, in the, the, the ring. Just that they finally signed their contracts at the end of NXT. We already knew the match was going to happen. They just had to sign uh, the contracts, and now they can't touch each other until uh, Sunday. Sunday. This is going to be a match. Uh, Dijak just attacks uh, Dragon off at all. He was torturing him last week, but then... It, then he closed the, the door on uh, Dragunov on his stomach. And then Dragunov tried to one-up him this week, but the ref stopped them from doing so. But they did a lot of damage to each other. This could be one of those underrated matches of the card where they just brawl, go at it, give us a barnstormer of a match. These two guys deserve it because I've been waiting for them to do something with both of these guys where they, have, they showcase that killer instinct, that grit, that attitude, just the, the characters. And we get, we get something from both of these because we've kind of had something missing uh, with Dijak with his character and then drag it off. We put him into these feuds where we know he's not going to win and it kind of takes a little bit away. But this is going to be a fun one because these are two guys on the teeter of getting caught up uh, soon. Like Dijak, I think they're working on his character and then development. And then Ela dragged off. It's just a matter of time before he gets caught up because there's no point of him being down there. He has the character, he has the the look, and, and he has the, the skills in the ring. And, and this could be the uh, the motion where he could lose this match and then get caught up. But I'm gonna go with the favor here. I'm gonna go with Dragon off here. I think he gets the win here. This would be his big win. Uh, Dijak has not won on a pay per view yet. So he can afford to lose again in his in, while he stays down. He's going to be down for a few months developing that character. Still, I do like it. I'm coming around to the to the whole uh, NXT gimmick that he's going with here with the the cop persona, justice fighting for justice, and then just have that the voice, the look, wearing the glasses, and attacking everybody. He's kind of an in-betweener. He's not a good guy, but he's not a bad guy. He's in-between. He's just Dijak. I like it. I think he loses here, though, to Dragunov. Dragunov gets the, the big win here, and he gets like a uh, small push. I think he could get caught up soon, but I could see him getting a title shot uh, next after this win. Whoever wins this match, I could see getting an NXT title shot. Uh, down the line. I think that's what the type of match this is going to be. I got Dragunov win this one. He needs to win more than Dijak right now uh, with him possibly getting caught up soon. So I'm going with Dragunov here. Yeah, getting the win at minus 220. You can bet it. It's a good bet odds there. So push him on both ends here against Dijak. I do love J Dijak though. In the future... So if, if they can keep the odds with him uh, next time on the next pay-per-view premium live event, that'd be a guy to go with uh, in a couple of months uh, come uh, Halloween Havoc time. So once again, last being standing, I'm going with Dragunov. 
And one note, uh, Dijak has had the better of Dragunov uh, on NXT. This is the perfect time to switch sides and then have this is how you get Dragunov over on Dijak by having him beat uh, Dijak in a last man standing match. Moving on to the next match, we got the North American Championship. We got Wesley, uh, the champion, versus Tyler Bate versus Joe Gacy. Wesley is minus 400. Tyler Bate is one plus 700. And Joe Gacy is plus 300. They've had a quite of a nice uh, storyline here. You got Tyler Bate and Wesley, Lee, who are friends, helping each other out. Tyler Bate helped him out during the whole uh, thing with uh, with uh, Clint Dempsey and, of course, uh, Drew Gulak. But then in comes in Joe Gacy a few weeks ago. Uh, Avarain told Joe Gacy, you got to start doing things for yourself. Uh, he got he helped get uh, Schism, uh, a.k.a. the Dyad, the tag tunnel match. And then afterwards, Avarain said, now that you helped them, Help yourself. Do something for yourself. So he in, inserted himself into the North American uh, Championship picture. He got the match with Wrestley, and then he conned uh, Tyler Beat into getting into the match as well. I think that's just to get inside the mind of Wesley, make him doubt the, his friendship with Tyler B. But we got a triple threat match here. Uh, Wesley is the longest reigning North American champion. Uh, he could come out on top here. Uh, I don't think Tyra Beat wins this match, but I think he's almost um, main card uh, version right now. I think it's just a matter of time before he gets caught up. Could be a SmackDown call, uh, call up after SummerSlam, but I think he's here to put on a great match and to help with the storyline. And so I either think Wesley or Joe Gacy are going to win it. I'm going to lean towards Joe Gacy. I think Wesley has grown past the North American Championship. He has defended it every week. He's a fighting champion. I think he needs something new now. I think he's starting to get stale with these open challenges and winning the championship each and every week. He needs something else. Uh, kind of like what Carmel Hayes. They kind of took the title off of him a couple of times to, to then put it back on him to make things fresh with him. They need something like that. And they need to do something with Joe Gacy. I think it's time that Joe Gacy finally wins that title and brings some importance to Schism. I think they need a champion. He's the leader. He needs that title to uh, to push that group a little bit because that group is good, but they always lose when it matters. And they need that push. Joe Gacy is a wonderful wrestler. He is main event. Uh, he is main card uh, worthy. And I think this is the perfect time to, to put the title on him and then have him and Wrestley get into a feud the next couple months for the title again. And then you got you get Joe Gacy win that match, and then you can have Wrestley move up to the world title picture be, uh, before he eventually gets called up. So I'm going with uh, Joe Gacy here at plus 300 odds. The perfect odds with bet in here. So I'm going with Joe Gacy on both sides. Uh, once again, now I'm three of four matches. I'm going with the underdog. NXT has had favorable uh, Ben odds here. Uh, I, I feel like they, they're they just trying to throw you off. But I could see a Wesley retain it. And if you think he's going to retain it, you go with those minus 400 odds. But I think the odds are going in Joe Gacy's favor Ben-wise. And then I'm picking him to win because I think his character needs that uh, North American title run to make Schism feel important, uh, especially moving forward. So Joe Gacy is my pick for this match. Moving on to the women's championship match for the tournament. We got the finals. We got Lyra Valkyrie, Lyra Valkyria, the plus 500 underdog versus Tiffany Stratton. Minus 1,000 odds. I think they've made it more abundantly clear who they want to win this match after Tuesday. You had Valkyria win her match against Cora Jade, but then Cora Jade 
uh, injures a Valkyria with her uh, long pipe that she comes to the ring with. She hit her in the leg a couple of times, damaged the, the thigh of Valkyria. Then the main event, Tiffany Stratton uh, shocked everybody in beating Roxanne Perez, and both are in the finals now. Uh, Tiffany Stratton's minus 1,000, like uh, Valkyria's plus 500. I think this is Tiffany Stratton's moment. I think she gets it done. She wins the title uh, and gets that here run that we've been looking for. A lot of people thought it was Cora Jade. I feel like with all the uh, Cora Jade uh, doing main events uh, and then on a WWE main event, I think she's pushed being caught up soon. And same with Ro- Roxanne Perez. Roxanne Perez already held the title. She's already had quite a year. She can afford to lose to help the NXT uh, 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 locker room develop other talent. And this is part of time to develop that next big here in NXT. Tiffany Stratton in the past has said that she wants to stay down NXT for a while to develop. She doesn't want to get caught up too soon to just get lost in the fold. So I think you put the title on her. She holds the title for a while, and then she develops as well because she's great in the ring. She has a great cocky attitude with her Hirsch gimmick, and then the fans like what they see product-wise. And then against her, she has a nice phone, Lyra Valkyrie. You, even in a loss, you can kind of protect Valkyria in this match by having her being injured thanks to Cora Jade. It protects her a little bit, and then you can book a rematch in the future, months down the line, where she can say that in that rematch, she'll be fully healthy this time. So uh, Tiffany Stratton has no excuses to fight, to fight her because the first time she was hurt due to Cora Jade. I think you can have her lose lose this match, do something with Cora Jade uh, for a third match where she wins, and then she comes back to this and possibly wins the title from Tiffany Stratton. But you get you got to give it a couple months uh, to get to that point, though. Maybe you wait until December to do it. But it, I think this is the time to put the belt on Tiffany Stratton. I'm staying away from betting on this one at minus 1,000 because you're not going to win anything. So I could just throw a couple bucks on a liar of Valkyria in case they decide to swear over everybody and build up Valkyria by winning the match, being injured, and that's the way of pushing an upset victory for her. But I'm going with Tiffany Stratton to win the NXT Women's Championship. Let's move on to the main event of the evening. We got the NXT Championship. We got the champ, the hometown hero, Carmelo Hayes, a.k.a. him. He's the minus 1,000 uh, uh, favorite. Versus Braun Breaker, the here Braun Breaker, the plus 500 underdog. Ever since uh, they had their match at Stanley Lillard, we've seen a new side of Braun Breaker. He's a heel. He doesn't care about the fans. He said it was like ever since then he's seen that. Why does he care about what the fans think if they don't care about him? They boo him now. And he's got to do things for himself now. So now he's going to now his focus on just himself. He's attacked Carmelo Hayes. He thinks Carmelo Hayes is, has been. And he just uh, he, he speared him once. He speared him through the air another time. He, and then he put him through uh, a wall a couple weeks ago. And he's injured him. He thinks that Carmelo Hayes is just this just a matter of time before he beats him. And on the other side, Carmelo Hayes, he has turned baby face. He is him. Him and Trick Williams are uh, the look for NXT now. I think he got he has the look. He's he's great on the mic. He's got the style. He's got everything. He's the almost the perfection of an NXT superstar right now for you. And he's babyface now. On top of that, he's going to be at home. I think that's a big push here. I think everything lean up into this match with him getting beat down and attacked by Braun Breaker is to make him look like money this Sunday in his hometown of uh, 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 Massachusetts to make it even better, plus to make Braun look great as a heel once he gets called up afterwards because I don't think there's anything left for Braun, if he loses his match, you don't leave him down there for a few months and then decide to call him up. I think he is a 
a post SummerSlam call up if it isn't anything here. Because I'm going with Carmelo Hayes to win this match. Just like I said, they've been pushing Brock being this dominant force the last month, injuring Carmelo Hayes, injuring the champion. I think Carmelo Hayes finds a way to get the job done, to retain it. He looks like a million dollars in retaining it. He, he keeps that big title run. And Braun Breaker you know, will have that couple of months of working as a heel to bring up to the main roster to the showcase that, that, that he can work as a heel and a babyface. I think it would be perfect if he debuts as a heel on, on the main roster on Raw. That would be a different look for him. And I'll get the fans one more of Braun Breaker because he's not just being that – baby face that wins and dominates. He, he adds a little bit more to it. He injures his opponents. He can get in the boo. He can play into uh, what the fans think and then take a little bit more out of it. And it's always better and easier being a heel. So I see that happening. I'm going Carmelo Hayes winning this match. He'll fight, He'll dig deep, find a way to win it. And then you get uh, Braun Breaker again the call up afterwards uh, after SummerSlam at minus 1,000 odds. Staying away from it. If there's any bit of you that think that Braun Breaker is going to win the title for a third time instead of a new president in NXT, then you you bank on that plus 500. You get it now before it lows down. But I'm going with Kamal Hayes. At minus 1,000, it's too huge of a mark to bet on his side. But I think it's a very good sign that he's going to retain his title and be the guy of NXT uh, for the the next couple of months. Because you want to know why? Because he is him. He is Carmelo Hayes. And I I would like to see a a thing with him and Trick Williams in the future. I want to see Trick Williams bust out from the shadow of Carmelo Hayes and start wrestling more, get known more, and become a great uh, like opponent down the future. I want to see that Sean versus uh, Diesel between the two of them where you had uh, Diesel break out from the shadow of Shawn Michaels and become a champion, and then they do a, lo- a lot with uh, both of them uh, as enemies and as friends. I think that's the future of NXT with the title picture after this Sunday. But once again, I got Carmel Hayes pulling out this one in the main event of NXT Battleground. That wrap things up with today's NXT Battleground 2023 picks and prediction show by yours truly, Cage. I'm putting this one out, and I'm putting out my WWE uh, Night of Champions uh, uh, picks and predictions out at the same time this Wednesday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. You can check out the rest of the week. Uh, the Blind Entertainment is running uh, predictions for all four pay-per-views. So check out them out on WrestleBread. You can check that out on Top Rope Wrestling. You can check it out. Tim King Show, uh, Clark Street Wrestling. we got Circle Debate. We got it all. Check it out on, uh, on any of those shows. we got prediction shows running for all four uh, premium live events slash pay-per-views. Uh, so check out the content on the Bloodline Entertainment Network. And, of course, as always, smash the like button down below and hit me up in the comment section to the right. Give me your feedback and predictions for NXT Battleground for this Sunday uh, premium live event. But other than that, I'm your host, Cage. You can follow me on Cage of My IQ. Uh, of course, just like I said, I'm on Instagram and I'm on Twitter as well. So you can follow me on both platforms and then check out all my content on YouTube at www.youtube.com slash Cage of My IQ. I'll be back next week with UFC on ESPN 46. I hope you guys enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Have a good one, guys, and check you guys out later. See ya.